So I'm Eduardo Briseño. I co-founded Mindset Works uh, 13 years ago with Carol Dweck and Lisa Blackwell. And since then, I've been focused on growth mindset, which is what, what I'm here to explore with you today. I'll be going through a quick uh, overview of growth mindset over the next 15 minutes, and then I'll have a conversation with Al as in, as in prior sessions. Um, so as we all are very aware of, we're going through a lot of change, um, especially in the year 2020. But when when there's so much change going on, uh, we might get the impression that at some point we're going to be past the COVID-19 crisis and, and all the crises that are going through and change is going to stop. Uh, and, and the thing is that change will never stop. Like change has never stopped. Change will never stop over the long term. Uh, the rate of change has only accelerated. And so for me, the, the question is, how can we equip ourselves to thrive on change, right, to be highly a change to leverage change so that it makes us stronger. I mean, Rashanda just said that she wants to write down a, a thank you note to 2020, right? Uh, change can make us stronger. A lot of good things come out of change, especially if we drive the change that we want to see in the world, as we also heard from Asaya, Isaiah and, uh, and Rashanda. And so that's the question, that, that's what this session is about, is how can we equip ourselves to drive on change, to thrive on change, and to drive the change that we want to see in the world? Um, and, and this is not something that we have to resign ourselves to, you know, that we, we have to say, oh my God, we just have to accept that change is there. Change can actually enrich our lives, make it fuller, you know, make, make us more fulfilled and just have a more interesting life and be able to better achieve our goals, both in, as individuals and as organizations. So that's what we're going to explore today. And to do that, uh, we're going to uh, and interact a little bit through a polling system different than the one you've used so far today. I'm just going to ask you to open up a browser in your mobile device or any device or your laptop and just go to this URL, polleb.com slash works. And when you get there, you're going to see a question that I want to answer. The question is, how do I want my colleagues to perceive me and to think of me? Again, the URL is polleb.com slash works you'll see the URL at the top of the polling question as well. And so the question is, how do I want my colleagues to perceive me and to think of me? We'll come back to this in a few minutes. So what we're going to explore today is, is this idea that Al mentioned of growth mindset, uh, which is uh, opposed to fixed mindset. A growth mindset is when we see ourselves as able to change ourselves and to develop ourselves. And so we might see different things in a growth mindset or in a fixed mindset, which is when we see ourselves as static, as fixed the way we are. So, for example, we might see intelligence as something that anybody can further develop. We can continue to, in, to strengthen our intelligence. That would be a growth mindset about intelligence versus intelligence is fixed in people, either at a high level or a medium level or a low level. That's a fixed mindset. Or it can be anything else. It can be in being a leader you know if you people think that you're a natural leader you're either a natural leader or you're not that's a fixed mindset about leadership versus anybody can become a better leader that would be a growth mindset about leadership or you know being a numbers person and analyzing numbers or public speaking or being an ally or an anti-racist uh, any of these things we can see as people things that people either have naturally or things that can be developed and that has a lot of consequences one thing that that's important is that if we want to improve, we have to change. Sometimes we like the idea of improvement. We don't like the idea of change so much. But actually, if we don't change, if we're the same today than we were yesterday, we haven't gotten better. In fact, we've probably gotten a bit less efficacious because the world has changed and we haven't changed. So the more that we understand that we can change, the more that, that improvement is possible. The other reason that this is important is that a lot of research shows that in these, in one of these two beliefs, it kind of like gives us different eyes. We see ourselves and other people in the world in different ways, and that leads us to behave differently and to achieve different results. And I'm going to unpack that, summarize very briefly for us uh, in terms of the research base in a, in a few minutes. Uh, and, and one thing that I'm going to ask you to do then is to think about when you are in a fixed mindset and how it affects us. Because all of us are in a fixed mindset some of the time. It's part of being human. So we're going to do that in a, in a moment. Now, I'm actually going to ask you to do the opposite of that. So imagine that a fixed mindset doesn't exist and that we could change ourselves in any way we wanted to. Uh, so if we take that as an assumption, then if I could get better at anything, what would I improve? Whether personally or professionally, what would that be for you? Submit that. <laughs> 
please. And again, we'll come back to this later. So I'm going to unpack this relationship that, that the research has shown that the way that we believe, uh, what we believe about abilities, whether they're fixed or malleable, leads us to behave differently and to achieve different results. So, so summarize lots of lots of research, when we're in a fixed mindset, we're thinking, okay, if people are smart and talented or not, I want to be in the smart and talented category. So the way I go about doing that is by doing the things that I already know how to do that are in my comfort zone, that I can do quickly, perfectly, without effort and without mistakes. I, I stay in that comfort zone. Versus in a growth mindset, we can be kind of unmotivated and disengaged if we're not being challenged. What we want is to do something that is challenging that, that we're gonna be able to learn from. In a fixed mindset, we see effort as something that's negative. Only people with low ability need to work hard. People with high ability don't need to work hard. But when we're in a growth mindset, we understand that we can all benefit from hard work and that the people who achieve the highest level of competence in their fields work really hard to get there and continue to work really hard to get even better, right? Like Olympic gold medalists who are the best in the world, they continue to, get to, to see hard work as something that can continue to make them better. Um, when we receive... When we experience setbacks, like we make mistakes or experience failure, in a fixed mindset, we take that as evidence that our ability is fixed at a low level. So we tend to disengage. We say, I'm not good at this. I'm going to go do something else. Versus in a growth mindset, we understand that if we're doing something we haven't mastered yet, we're not going to do it flawlessly. So we're going to persevere. We're going to practice. We're going to ask for help. We're going to try different strategies. Um, in a fixed mindset, when we receive feedback or criticism, we tend to react defensively. We tell ourselves, this person doesn't know what they're talking about or they're just trying to hurt me. Versus in a growth mindset, we listen and we say, hey, is there some truth here that I can learn from? And all of these things allow us. And then when other people succeed, you know, in a fixed mindset, we see that as a threat if they're succeeding you know, at higher levels than we, than we are. Um, and in a growth mindset, we see them as a potential source of learning. This person is so good at X, what could I learn from them? What could I emulate? And all of these things allow us to improve and learn more over time and achieve higher performance. Now there's also research on growth mindset that shows that our mindset impacts our relationships. And we can imagine how we view people who succeed high, more highly than us, how that impacts how we interact with them and our relationship with them. Another example is when there's wrongdoing, like when we're in the office and somebody says something passive aggressive, uh, in a fixed mindset, we take the negative behavior and we attribute it to fixed traits in the other person. We tend to label them and we tend to react by engaging in warfare, trying to beat them down. Versus in a growth mindset, we attribute the negative behavior to their current motivations or situations, both of which can change. And so we tend to react by engaging in conversation, trying to share our perspective, trying to listen to them, to them, maybe kind of as a tourist, right? Trying to understand them better, like Al said. Um, and finally, when life gets really hard, in a fixed mindset, we see higher rates of depression and lower resilience. And in a growth mindset, we see uh, lower rates of depression and higher resilience because we understand that we can change, the people around us can change. Now, there's a lot of information. You, you don't have to remember all of this. The key here is that when we understand that humans can change and that we can change and the people around us can change, that lead us to be more effective learners, to improve more over time, to achieve higher performance on one side, and on the other side, to have more positive relationships with people. Often what happens when people learn about mindset is that they think about people in their life who are in a fixed mindset a lot, and they say, oh my God, my spouse is in a fixed mindset or my boss or whoever it is, and how do I change that? But I really encourage you to try to look when are we in a fixed mindset and how it affects us because all of us are in a fixed mindset and you haven't found, if you haven't found it for yourself, you haven't been reflecting enough. Now, one question that we often receive is, can you be in a growth mindset about something and a fixed mindset about something else? And the answer is yes. Um, or we can be in a fixed mindset and a growth mindset about somebody else uh, and the opposite about me. So I might see myself as a learner, but label the people I work with or the people in my family or the people in the other political party as people who can't change. And that has implications as to how we interact with them or vice versa. We might see them as learners and see ourselves as fixed, right? 
uh, or one might see different abilities as things that are fixed or things that can be developed. So I, when I asked you earlier if I could get better at anything, what would I improve? This is what you wrote down. I want you to think about which of these things do you tend to see as fixed in people? Do you tend to assume that people are either naturally great at them or not? And how might that be impacting you? Uh, so what often happens at work and at life is that we are so busy getting things done, just executing, trying to minimize mistakes all the time, do things flawlessly, that we don't, we're not deliberate about improvement. So we just are so worried about getting the work done that we don't pause and think about, how can I work smarter? How can I work better? How can I get better at this thing? And we tend to think that just by working hard, we're gonna get better. That's actually not how improvement works. If we want to get better at whatever it is, public speaking, you know, just doing a lot of public speaking is not the way to get better at public speaking. We have to engage in effective strategies to get better at public speaking. Or if we want to be better allies, it's not just, you know, yes, it is, you know, we, we can try to be an ally, but it's a lot more effective to learn, right, from Isaiah and, and Rashanda, effective strategies, and then practice them and come back to learning and then engage in conversations, in learning-oriented conversations, and not just try to do, be an ally as if we as, we, as if we know all the answers as to how to be a, an ally, right? Uh, like they said, they you know they know a lot, but they they don't know everything about allyship. They are themselves improving as well, and that's a very very growth minded approach. And it helps us be more resilient because when we're when we're not flawless, then we understand that we can continue to get better. We can stay engaged in the process, try different strategies, ask for help go to a book, go to a video, go to one of them, right? And continue to improve and get better. Um, so when I asked you earlier, again, the same question, if I could get better at anything, what would I improve? Whatever you wrote down or whatever is important for you in your personal life or your professional life, my question is, are you being deliberate about improving at that thing or are you just executing or performing that thing, right? So um, if you want to be a better listener, are you doing anything to become a better listener, right? Are you watching videos about how to become a better listener or reading books about it or articles or asking people for you know, ideas and strategies? Uh, or are you just thinking that it's going to happen by magic uh, because it's not gonna happen by magic. That's not how improvement happens. So three things that we can do to foster a growth mindset and to get better at getting better, to get better at improvement. One thing is think about how we frame things for ourselves and for our colleagues and family members. And that means how to explain what it is that we do on a daily basis, you know, Our, is, is getting better a core part of the narrative of what we do every day? Are we every day trying to get better and talking about it uh, so that we're reminding ourselves that, that, that that's part of what we're doing every day? Second, are we setting up systems and habits to improve? You know, how is it that we want to improve? Do we want to experiment? Do we want to engage in feedback? Do we want to talk about mistakes and try to figure out what to do differently next time? Are we doing pre-mortems or more post-mortems after we have before and after projects? Uh, what is it? What habits and systems are we going to use to improve and get better over time? Obviously, people and analytics is a big part of that for for our work here, right? For and so, how are we using people analytics in order to improve and get better at things? And finally, modeling learning. Often what happens is that even if we see ourselves as learners, even if we think that learning is important, we portray ourselves as knowers to other people instead of as learners. So uh, if we portray ourselves as know-it-alls, our actions will speak louder than our words. And when other people emulate those behaviors, that we're gonna have a know-it-all culture, right? Where people are not being vulnerable with each other or like showing their, their them, themselves not as flawless. And then what happens is a know-it-all culture rather than a learning culture. Uh, so when I asked you earlier, how do I want my colleagues to perceive me and to think of me? Uh, you, you wrote things like being responsible or being an expert or a team player or supportive, caring, data-driven, reliable, competent. As a learner, right? That's great. You know, there's somebody here who is, who is mindful about wanting to be portrayed as a learner in front of other people. And that's critical in order to create a learning oriented culture. So the, the other things that are here are wonderful things, they're positive things. I don't want you to remove those things, but what I want you to think about is, do you want to also, in addition to those things, be deliberate about being portrayed as a learner, as a work in progress, because that's the only way to create a learning oriented culture. 
Um, so change starts with me. Often when we learn about growth mindset and fixed mindset or inclinations to go and try to want to change other people, but we can't change other people without changing ourselves. And we can't really understand deeply mindsets without doing the work internally for ourselves. Um, so I'll leave you with three questions. One is what insights did I generate? You know, so far today, there's been so much, right? But insights are weak connections in the brain because they're new connections in the brain. So if we don't stop and think about them and write them down and come back to them tomorrow and next week and the following week, we're going to forget them. As humans, we tend to overestimate how much we will remember. We tend to forget, you know, most of the stuff. So write down the big insights from today, come back to them tomorrow, come back to them next week. And that way they'll, they'll, they'll strengthen those connections in the, in the brain and then they'll become permanent connections. Then that stuff you're going to know as opposed to forget. Second, what will I do and when? When we identify when we'll do something, we're a lot more likely to follow through and actually do something about it. So whether it is in this session or any other session, you know, identify what you will do as a result of today and when you will do it. And finally, who will I become? In a growth mindset, we never stop becoming. We're always continuing to change ourselves throughout our lives. Uh, so thank you. I hope this has been helpful, and I look forward to chatting with Al. Eduardo, you're just a rock star. <laughs> I mean, I, I, let's just jump right in because I spun up a poll um, at the outset of your session. And the question was this, does your organization encourage growth mindset in some way? And the selection options were yes, absolutely. A little bit, but not formally. Uh, no, but we've discussed it. And no, we haven't discussed. And you'll be happy to hear that 57% of respondents said yes, absolutely, that we, uh, our organization encourages growth mindset, which invites the question, because I've asked this question over the years uh, since being exposed to it by, by Carol Dweck and, and the, the fantastic book, Mindset, The New Psychology of Success, which I believe is still new in many respects, um, is this, is that not many organizations are actually assessing on whether or not someone either has a predisposition to a growth mindset or has worked on developing a growth mindset. And I'm talking about through the recruiting process, I'm talking about elevating uh, you know, high performers or, or uh, looking for um, high potentials. You know, So that's kind of been, uh, hey, this is a great concept, everyone take a look at it, but they have not put their processes around this concept. Would you encourage organizations to adopt more discipline, for lack of a better term, in assessing and developing growth mindset, or would that be counterproductive? Your thoughts? Yeah, so first, um, I, I do, th there's a lot of excitement about growth mindset. A lot of organizations wanting to make uh, growth mindset a key part of their strategic efforts and culture. Um, so when I go into one of these organizations that are, everybody's talking about growth mindset, and I'm doing a workshop there. I, where it's usually a, a longer session. So, and I would do it. I would have done it today if it was a longer session. But what I ask people at the beginning in this same system polling system is, I ask them in my own words, what does growth mindset mean? And even if they've been talking about growth mindset for months, they most the vast majority of them write something down like it's working hard or it's persevering. Um, or is taking on challenges. And none of those things are growth mindset. So I think your your question about can we be rigorous about assessment is, is important. I want to talk about that. But I think the first step is, is to be rigor, rigorous about what it is. Um, because mm -hmm. often what people distort it to mean something that it's not, they distort it to mean behaviors that they already believe in, whether it's working hard or persevering or taking on challenges. Um, and those are behaviors. And what growth mindset research has shown is that it's really hard to do those behaviors without the unbelief that humans can change or that intelligence can improve. And, and so, um, so without that clarity, we try to keep encouraging the behaviors, but the behaviors don't happen because the beliefs are not changing. So we have to work at both the beliefs and the behaviors level at the same, uh, 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 at the same time. Uh, so rigorous about what it means and what the implications are is like step one. Uh, I think that the assessment, there can be opportunities around assessment. Assessment is also tricky because uh, growth mindset is a belief, right? And and so you can't really assess growth mindset in a rigorous way, in a way that is you know frequent and that um, that is is meaningful. 
because the, the way that we know to assess beliefs is to ask people for their opinions, right? You ask them to fill out a survey where they agree or disagree with different statements. And, um, and any time that then people learn what the, what the more desirable, social desirable answer is, they'll start answering that even the belief, right? Or if there's any sort of kind of ramifications, if, the, if their department's going to look good if they answer in a certain way, like it's really, really easy to, to, for the growth mindset assessments to get distorted. And so uh, assessing growth mindset per se is something that is really hard to do, but what's, what's really very, very possible to do and we do on a daily basis, whether socially and informally or more rigorously, is assess behaviors, right? If you want people to ask for feedback, then how often are people asking for feedback? If you want people to debrief after projects to figure out what went well, what didn't go well, what they can do differently next time, you can assess whether those conversations are happening. If you want people to experiment, you want you can assess that. Um, and so assessing the behaviors that are observable, that are objective, whether it is assessing them by humans or assessing them by artificial intelligence, uh, that's a wonderful you know, thing to be, to be working on so that those behaviors are taking place more. Well, I mean, Eduardo, I, there's one reflection that I'm having is that we need a lot more time together because <laughs> I, I am really uh, just on the edge of my seat here because you know, there's one thing to your point around you know, hearing about it uh, colloquially and thinking that, okay, you know, that's something I should do, but not really understanding it, not really personally reflecting on, do I have the capacity to change? Uh, particularly those who are middle managers, executives, I've been doing this for 30 years, I am who I am, and there's not that uh, openness oftentimes either to change oneself or believe that others can in fact change. So just opening the door is what I'm hearing is a good first step to understand that, hey, this is possible to change, improve, however incrementally. Is that a fair playback? Yeah, that, that's great. Yeah, I would say like uh, I would add to that. I would say understanding what growth mindset is important, and then the other thing that's really goes hand in hand with it is understanding how people change, how people improve. What are the effective strategies to do that? Uh, because it's really hard to develop the belief that we can change if we don't really know how. So both of those things uh, go hand in hand together. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know, I, I mean, there's so much to talk about, um, and I'm going to shelve some of my questions for our next time that we have the opportunity to connect. But I really want to say thank you for sharing your insights. I mean, you're a world class speaker. What you've created is invaluable, and it's evidenced by you know what um, my kids have done with your work. So, so thank you so much. As we start to wrap up here. You're working on a, a book. You got you know, other projects on the horizon for you. So, so what's next for you and how can people learn more about the work that you're doing and stay connected with you? Thank you. I, I am heads down uh, working on a book. So I'm really excited about that. It's going to be about growth mindset and learning zone in work and life. Uh, we didn't get to talk about learning zone today, but it is the distinction between performing and improving. Uh, if you want to learn about that, uh, there, I have a TED talk on it. Uh, you can check that out. Uh, but for the next few months, I'll be heads down uh, writing. Uh, and I hope that the book is helpful. But thank you, Al, for everything you do. It's awesome to be part of Papa. And, um, and uh, I look forward to staying in touch. Yeah, likewise. Well, you, you be well. And uh, we will talk soon, I'm sure.